all their basketball gear on. Oh my God, flies, <laughs> horse poop, <laughs> if don't want to be around it. And then 1,200 pounds standing in front of you, don't want to deal with it. Roberta, in about somewhere between 30 seconds to three minutes, those kids would say to me, I know how to do this. Right. I, I get this. Wait a minute, I know how to put that halter on her. I can lead that horse. And they are leading that 1,200 pound horse as if they had done it all their lives. Well, they have. And that's the ancestral work coming through right. for them, yeah. where they get it. And they don't even know that's happening. And I'm watching it, and my staff were watching all this happen. And the growth and healing happens at that moment when they find that ability and that courage and that strength and that greatness to come through and it comes through the horses because the horses will only deal with you if you're authentic, if you're just, if you're fair, if you're communicating well. And uh, so they only want that kind of a leader. So that's, that's great. And you have, I mean, you're in a, such a, un especially in Malibu, you're in a very unique um, mm -hmm. area which is very adjacent to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, and kids that live in Los Angeles really don't have those kind of opportunities on an everyday basis. And especially Native kids. I mean, there are 150,000 Native people in Los Angeles. And when I tell people that, they're shocked. Right. And uh, I said, I don't know why you're shocked. You know, we've, we've forced Native people all over the world to go to places that they didn't want to go and right. be separated from their families. And not only are there 150,000 Native people in Los Angeles, they're not in neighborhoods together. Right, and they're all, most of the majority of the um, Native people in the city of Los Angeles are all as a result of relocation. Absolutely. From maybe one or two generations right. back. Another part of the genocide. Yes, you know? exactly. We can't kill you all and then put you on a reservation, you know, or traumatize you through boarding school. Maybe we can just separate you all and see if we can exactly. stop it that way. So what the horse work did, what Red Horse Nation hopes to do and has been doing, is not only providing services for Native people in and around uh, the cultural and spiritual aspects of being with horses, because for most Native people, horses are true medicine, mm -hmm. and they're very important and sacred medicine, and they were a partnership. They were not a commodity. They were not just something to be used. They were something to be honored and to gr and grow from and to heal from. Mm -hmm. Um, we also go around to other agencies in around this country. We've been up to the Blackfeet uh, Reservation at the Poker Ranch, and we've been down to the Navajo Nation recently. And we're helping other Native agencies and Native people start their own programs. Uh, Red Horse Nation doesn't belong to me. Okay. <laughs> Red Horse Nation yeah. is just something as a vehicle, a way to help and support people who would like to bring horse work and horse culture and spiritual work back to the native tribe or the native okay. agency. And you have a, you know, you ha you mentioned you have a very unique background. You mentioned that you are not native, although you have grown up in, um, mm -hmm. you know, a native household. Can you talk about how that aspect of your life has brought you into this work? Oh, not without crying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, my makeup. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, my stepfather, uh, Charles Henry Lowe Manuel, part of the Fields family and the Penobscot tribe, um, what he did for me is to actually heal my trauma from ma ma many European uh, Eurocentric ways of living. The idea that we're all connected. So mm -hmm. therefore the horse is not away from me or not something that's not part of me. That horse is me. I am horse. Horse is me. So we are all connected. The idea that the healing actually happens outside, not inside a room. And certainly not a square room. Yeah. So my dad was all about being outside and making sure that we understood what we got from nature, what we got from animals, and what we got from plants and our food and humor. My dad had a wonderful sense of humor. And if you want to laugh a lot, be around horses because mm -hmm. they'll make you laugh and they're pretty funny. So um, my dad was also a very spiritual man. My father was spiritual all day, everywhere, not just on Sundays, yeah. not just in a building. He brought it with him no matter what happened, and he had a tremendous amount of faith and trust in us as children. So what was different for me growing up was having a parent who saw the best in me and the strength in me and then uh, invited me to constantly live up to that. And those are the spiritual and cultural principles that I think Native people have brought right. to this earth that need to be honored on a daily basis, and the horse work allows me to do that. So I thank my father for that and my ancestors for that. So you went you, and you um, graduated from Antioch University I did. I in did. the city of Los Angeles, mm -hmm. is that correct? That's right. 
Um, and where do you get training? I mean, that's not something that you, you I know the Antioch here in Santa Barbara doesn't have a, a class no, that teaches actually, you this. Like, Antioch how does this happen? Was a little, well, let me just tell you how <laughs> okay. hard it was. It was try, trying to talk to my peers or even my teachers about it because I got certified in doing this work from EGALA before I actually graduated. And I'd go in to work, and I'd be with the horses, and then I would go into the counseling center, or I would go to class, and I'd put my foot up like this. I don't know if you can get a wide shot of this, guys, but I'd put my foot up like this, and I'd have horse poop on my boot. <laughs> so <laughs> I would remember to change my pants, but right down there, there's some horse poop, and I'd go, oh my gosh, I could put my foot down. And I tried really hard to get them to understand the experiential, experiential part of healing. Mm -hmm. We now know that the limbic brain heals only through experience. It doesn't heal just because you and I are sitting here talking. It's a nice experience, right. but experiential therapy, well, what is experiential therapy? It's living life. It's what Native people and Indigenous people always understood, that your healing came from what you did, not just from what you were thinking or talking about, but what you actually did. So it was hard. It was sort of hard to convince. Um, Antioch, and as progressive as they are, and as open as they are, there was still a lot of, uh, I don't know. Now, now they really get it, and I really thank them for that. I think most universities now are understanding how important it is to open up the format of healing to right. not just the Eurocentric way, but to indigenous ways as well. That's wonderful. That is really wonderful. Yeah. So, and you're working with a very unique community. Yes. Pretty much as uh, Native, especially, is it Native children only, or is it... Um, well, we, at UAII and Seven Generations Counseling Center, we have such a diverse group anyway. Because we're not on a reservation and we're not in Indian country where you would say there are more of one members or more tribal members of right. one tribe. We have, I mean, I may have a bunch of kids out in the pasture where they're Navajo and Crow and Lakota and, and Pima. I mean, there may be many different kinds of um, uh, tribal members. So what's unique about what we do, and they may be mixed race, so there may mm -hmm. be, you know, also, you and I talked about this earlier, about the fact that uh, many of the kids know very little about their native culture and their native uh, ancestors. So when I have them out in the pasture with the horses, one thing that they all have in common is this desire to want to know the horse. Then the horse right. allows them to figure out who they are and the coping mechanisms that they've had to create because of trauma in their family. But it's not just trauma in the family. It's absolutely uh, societal trauma. And we talked about that again, historical trauma. So yeah, it's a very unique group of people that I oftentimes have. And I may have very different ages as well in the pasture working with the horses. But the horses don't care. Yeah. <laughs> they just care who your spirit, what your spirit is saying to them. And as well as, um you know, to be able to give somebody that opportunity to have that experience. That, that I know within, you know, with urban kids from Los Angeles really don't get, don't get that much. No, they don't. And the, the you know, societal um, things that they're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, being, you know, inner city, mm -hmm. and how do they, how do they continue the work for themselves once they, um, they have this mm -hmm. experience at the ranch? Some will go on to be and do more work with animals and being outside. Many won't. What will happen is, is that the healing and the beginnings of the healing, I call it planting the seeds, they take that self-worth, the leadership, the understanding of their own hurt mm -hmm. and how they can uh, bring back some of their own strengths as people. That continues and that gets transferred. So if all of a sudden you're a kid and you're standing in front of a 1,200-pound horse and you've learned to say, whoa, and that horse stops, and you say, over here, and you bring it over, when you go home and someone is pushing your boundaries right. or doing something to you that's not okay, I actually tell the kids to go home and go, whoa, <laughs> do that, and then walk away. So, so they're setting up their own healthy boundaries exactly, on a daily basis. And exactly right. So we plant seeds in that behavior, whether or not they ever go out into a horse pasture again or even ever get to the reservation. That connection to that horse and what that horse showed them about who they are in terms of their strength, their spiritual, emotional, and physical strength carries in every aspect of their lives. And I've had kids come back to me now that I've been doing it for four years and tell me that, kids that have graduated and come back and said, you know, 
when I was in that pasture with that, I still remember when, when I was able, and how is Big 